No contact, no defense, no action. Just three results that dominate modern baseball. A strikeout, a walk, or a home run. These are the three true outcomes, and they've become the defining model for an entire generation of hitters. But how did we get here? Why are more and more players turning into all-or-nothing sluggers? And is this trend helping or hurting the game we love? Today, we're diving deep into the rise of the TTO hitter, why it's happening, the players leading the charge, and what it means for the future of offense in baseball. The three true outcomes are called true because they remove defense from the equation. A strikeout doesn't rely on the fielders. A walk is settled between the pitcher and the batter, and a home run clears the field entirely. These are the purest results of a plate appearance. One-on-one -on -one showdowns between pitchers and hitters. No gloves, no bloops, no lucky hops, just true outcomes. In the 1970s, the three true outcomes accounted for about one in four plate appearances. By the 2000s, it was closer to 30%. Today, nearly 40% of all MLB plate appearances end in a strikeout, walk, or a home run. This didn't happen overnight, and it didn't happen by accident. But how did we get here? First, let's meet some of the players who helped define this trend. Adam Dunn, the godfather of the TTO era. Dunn has a career 28.6 strikeout rate, 15.8% walk rate, and 462 career home runs, which is a 5.5% home run percentage. He hit 237 for his career and was still incredibly valuable. His TTO rate was nearly 50%. Another star of the three true outcome era is Joey Gallo. On his career, he walked 14.6% of the time, K'd 38% of the time, and hit a home run at a 6.1% clip. His career batting average was below 200, but he still has over eight seasons of big league service time. Kyle Schwarber, Patrick Wisdom, Jack Sawinski are all new wave guys who regularly post TTO rates over that 45-50% to 50 mark. So why is this happening? A few reasons why TTO dominance has exploded is 1. Pitchers throw harder than ever. Average fastball is now over 94 miles per hour, and with the technology that we have available to us today, the stuff is even better. Making contact, let alone quality contact, is just harder than it was back in the day. Next, slugging is rewarded more than batting average. Teams want extra base hits, not singles. Some teams are beginning to think that it may be better to strike out twice and hit a homer than it is to go two for five with two singles. And the numbers technically back that up. Then something that has been banned now is shifts began to punish weak contact. For a while, Teams loaded up the right side of the field for left-handed hitters and dared hitters to beat it. So, hitters just leaned into power instead. The easiest way to beat the shift was to hit it over the fielders' heads. Obviously, this has been restricted now, but certainly pushed us in the direction of the three true outcome approach. So let's talk about the analytics behind this three true outcome offense. If you're talking to an MLB analyst, they may tell you that statistically speaking, Walks and home runs are two of the most valuable outcomes in baseball. Strikeouts are just another out, and often better than a weak grounder. That's why hitters and teams are okay with this risk. You've heard me say TTO, that just stands for three true outcomes. The formula is pretty simple. Walks plus home runs plus Ks divided by plate appearances. You can use this to find the true outcome kings. Many elite hitters today are taught not to chase that a walk is fine, and barrel the ball or bust. Make sure you get your A swing off. Don't get cheated. Advanced stats like FIP and WOBA do favor this three true outcome approach. Two of the most influential monitored stats, FIP for pitchers and WOBA for hitters, elevate the value of the three true outcomes. For FIP, it focuses only on what a pitcher can control. Strikeouts, walks, hit batters, and home runs. It ignores defense, shifts, and batted ball luck. If you strike guys out and don't give up homers, FIP says you're golden, even if your ERA disagrees. WOBA, or Weighted On Base Average, gives extra credit for walks and homers. Unlike batting average, it doesn't treat a single and a home run the same. It rewards players who generate high-value outcomes, even if they don't rack up traditional hits. So when teams use these metrics to evaluate performance, power is in, walks are underrated, and strikeouts are not ideal, 
but not nearly as punishing as a double play or a lazy grounder. Advanced Metrics basically confided what TTO hitters do best, and helped justify their value, even when batting averages drop below that 220 mark. So we touch on something that's pretty controversial. Is a strikeout really just another out? This is where the argument gets pretty spicy. Some say a strikeout is just one of the 27 outs, and it's no different than grounding out to second. But others argue that how you make an out matters. Here's the breakdown of each side. Why strikeouts are just another out. When you strike out, there's no chance of a double play. There's no risk of a fielder's choice getting out the lead base runner. It keeps rally killers, like ground outs with runners on, to a minimum, and doesn't depend on bad BAPIP luck. However, why strikeouts might be worse, there's no chance of advancing, like a runner tagging on a flyout. It does not put pressure on the defense. There's no bad hop, no error, or no booted balls. And zero ball and play opportunities equal fewer chances for chaos. So while the stats often treat strikeouts neutrally, some baseball minds, especially old school ones, still value productive outs over none at all. In reality, in low leverage situations, a K really just might be another out. But in late game or runners on situation, a weak ground ball can sometimes be better than nothing. Like everything, context matters. But is this hurting the game? Here's where we continue to stay a bit controversial. Yes, TTO hitters are efficient, but are they entertaining? There's less balls in play, which means less action. There's more dead time, fewer stolen bases, and fewer highlight reel plays. MLB's average game now features fewer hits than ever, and Commissioner Rob Manfred introduced rules like the pitch clock and banning the shift in part to combat this issue. More contact equals better pace, which equals more engaged fans, and that stuff matters for the future of the game. Because the TTO approach doesn't just stop in the majors. College and minor league hitters are being trained to swing big, accept Ks, and hit the ball in the air or walk. But now, with new rules pushing contact and pace at the big league level, the pendulum might swing back. And all of that trickles down to high school and youth baseball as well. If you're a ball player looking to improve or a coach trying to develop smarter players, check out Pitch Logic. It's a smart baseball that connects to your phone and gives you real-time feedback on velocity, spin rate, and release point, and more advanced metrics that help you fine-tune your game. It's one of the most affordable, accurate tools on the market, trusted by pros and verified by independent studies. Use code SIMPLE at checkout for $25 off the PitchLogic ball and start making your own data-driven adjustments today. So, will three true outcomes dominate forever? Maybe not. We're already seeing teams prioritizing bat-to-ball skills and draft picks. Players like Luis Arez, becoming rare contact first outliers, are still valuable. More emphasis on well-rounded hitters who can do more than just mash or walk. TTO isn't dead, but the league is adjusting, and the hitters of tomorrow may look a little different than the all-or-nothing sluggers of the 2010s and 2020s. And hey, if you're into breakdowns like this and you want to support smarter baseball content, check out our new merch here on the store tab on the channel or the website linked below. Your support goes a long way. What do you think? Are three true outcome hitters a problem or just part of baseball's evolution? Drop a comment down below and let's talk about it. And don't forget to subscribe and check out our other videos on OBP, WOBA, and other analytics behind modern batting strategies. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Simple Saber Metrics.